Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, we are going to talk about design and simulation of class B commutation using MATLAB. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram of a class B commutation circuit. It is also referred to as resonant pulse commutation. So it basically contains an additional uh, thyristor and capacitor and inductor circuit that is uh, connected in this particular fashion in comparison with a class A commutation circuit. Uh, so uh, this is the auxiliary thyristor that is used. Uh, so uh, capacitor is assumed to be initially charged to a certain voltage that is equal to the supply voltage in this case Vs. So be very careful with this assumption. Based on this assumption only we will be doing the simulation as well. So this is a very very important point. I am not going into the detailed working of how the circuit uh, operates but I am uh, definitely going to show you the design and simulation uh, with respect to the expected waveforms as well in MATLAB. So let's get started. Uh, we will be looking at the waveform. Um, the, this is the gate pulse that is given to thyristor 1 and this is the gate pulse given with respect to auxiliary thyristor. These are the expected waveforms waveform so just to give you an overview we are not going to concentrate on each and every waveform we are only looking at uh, the point when the thyristor is turned off that is the voltage across the thyristor is one of the most important aspects that is the one, uh, one of the most important things that we are going to talk about and uh, simulate it in MATLAB so what is the design we are, every design has certain assumptions that is required to be made uh, in this uh, design we are assuming the supply voltage to be equal to 230 volt DC the inductor to be 5 micro Henry and capacitor to be 20 microfarad so based on LNC values we will be determined the resonant frequency uh, you'll be getting 0.1 into 10 power 6 radians per second so frequency is given as omega naught by 2 pi you'll be getting 15.91 kilohertz and uh, further the time period will be 62.83 microsecond why we are calculating this this will be entered as our value in pulse generator block in order to trigger the thyristor so that's the reason why we are finding this particular value so once this is done we will get started with MATLAB so let's go to MATLAB and start our simulation all right, here we are. So uh, we will be clicking on Simulink library browser and search for the components that we want. At the first place, we'll be requiring a power gear block. So add power gear block. We also need a voltage measurement and current measurement block. Add them as well. Once that is done, we will be requiring a DC voltage source uh, over here. So we will be adding this block as well. So once uh, that is also done, we will be searching for thyristor. So you will be getting right at the bottom. Scroll a little down add this block as well. So we also need uh, a diode in order to uh, achieve freewheeling action with respect to uh, the capacitor and the inductor circuits that are there in the circuit. So we will add that as well. Once that is done, we need a pulse generator block in order to trigger this thyristor. So search for pulse, you will be getting pulse generator block and that as well. Uh, once that is also done, uh, we will be requiring a series RLC branch. So add that. We can later have uh, multiple copies of this by copy pasting them. So uh, once that is done, we need a scope in order to check the nature of waveforms that are there. So add that block as well. I guess we have all the components according to the requirements. Now we'll be placing it in appropriate position so that we can get started off with the circuit connections. All right, so one of the most important things to remember is to double click on the thyristor and disable measurement port. We need um, another thyristor that is auxiliary thyristor. So I'll be copy pasting that as well. So series RLC is to be connected in the series uh, LC circuit is to be connected in this particular uh, fashion. So its value is chosen to be equal to five micro Henry. So select that and the capacitance is uh, chosen to be equal to 20 microfarad so I'll be selecting that one of the most important aspect is to select set the initial capacitor voltage this is one of the most commonly made mistakes by students if you don't set the initial capacitor voltage according to our assumption then you'll definitely not get the output and thyristor will not be turned off so um, rotate this it should be in this particular fashion according to the polarity is concerned um, so we will be uh, connecting the diode in this particular uh, region so we will be uh, disabling the measurement port in diode as well so double click on it and disable that and we will be following the circuit connection we will be connecting it across uh, according to our circuit diagram so uh, a thyristor auxiliary thyristor is to be connected in this particular fashion and uh, we also need uh, a series RL uh, we need a uh, load that is a resistive load in this case we will be using uh, it with a value of equal to 1 ohms so we are not having a very high value of load that is chosen however you can try it for different loads as well and check how the output waveform differs from each other 
so one more important aspect is to set the pulse in data block so the time period uh, will be increasing the amplitude to 100 so that we can clearly see how the pulses look like when it is compared with different waveforms um, it what happens is we will not be able to clearly see the pulse in data block so the pulses can be seen if you have an higher amplitude our amplitude does not affect uh, the waveform uh, with respect to the simulation uh, aspect so the time period uh, is to be set as 62.8 into 10 power minus 6 so be very careful with respect to this this is already discussed in our design procedure so once this is done pulse width is chosen to be 5 because we want a majority of the time to be turned off uh, this is uh, because we want to see the waveforms clearly so that's the reason why I'm setting at 5 you can clearly observe in the output waveform why I have set this to 5 so once this is done uh, click on ok we need another block uh, which is similar to that so I'll be connecting it over here for the auxiliary thyristor in order to trigger it so uh, we need a current uh, measurement block um, in order to measure the output current output current is not necessarily required to be measured in the circuit but in case if you're really curious just to see what is the load current then uh, we can really take a look at it um, secondly we need uh, to measure the voltage across the thyristor this is one of the most important aspects this is why we are actually doing the entire circuit we want the thyristor to be turned off so uh, how do we achieve that that is the important aspect so that is the reason why we are measuring the voltage across the thyristor Apart from that, uh, we can check the pulses and also compare uh, from when uh, the thyristor is turning off. So the supply voltage uh, is to be set uh, as 230 volt according to our design assumption. And uh, we have set all the other parameters. So we can now reduce uh, the simulation time to one second because these are static loads. So we don't need huge amount of simulation time to be taken. All right, so now we can double click on the scope to check how the waveform looks like. So we will be separating these waveforms to see them in different windows. So um, we can use that option. So I'll be zooming the waveform just to see uh, the initial portion of it. We'll be looking at only one cycle so that we'll get a clear understanding of uh, how it looks like with respect to the circuit analysis. So over here, if you carefully observe, uh, the first one uh, with respect to the waveforms that is connected, the first one uh, is the voltage and the second one uh, is the current waveform load current. So uh, be very careful here uh, while uh, making the observation. So uh, since the first waveform is the voltage waveform, if you carefully observe whenever there is a pulse, so once there is a pulse, the thyristor begins to conduct and when the thyristor is conducting, that means the voltage across the thyristor is zero. That means the thy whenever a thyristor is conducting, uh, the thyristor will be so short circuit voltage will always be equal to zero volt and that's why it's zero over here and once the gate pulse is turned off like there's no gate pulse given to it gradually the voltage across lnc elements that is lnc will be very high um, as a result it will turn this uh, thyristor off and that's why you're seeing uh, the uh, voltage across the thyristor being uh, dropped off and uh, so over here so here uh, the voltage so um, clearly it's uh, uh, once the thyristor is off, uh, once the thyristor is conducting over here, uh, it begins to turn off because of the voltage across LNC that is already shown previously. Uh, so it gradually increases and uh, the voltage across the thyristor becomes equal to the supply voltage, approximately equal to the supply voltage, that is 230 volt. And it begins to be at this particular point, uh, almost to be constant. But what happens is there's another gate pulse coming up. So that's the reason why it's again conducting in the cycle repeats so uh, very important observation is when is the thyristor turning off this is the re portion like from here this point to this point if there is another gate pulse not given to this the thyristor would be completely turned off but since uh, there is a gate pulse the thyristor again turns off and the si turns on and the cycle repeats so this region from here to here is the region where you can say that thyristor is turned off so uh, this is the important observation with respect to class b commutation we're using another thyristor and with the help of lnc components we'll be able to turn off the thyristor i hope this uh, video uh, gives you a clear understanding of what class b commutation is all about in case you have any questions feel free to reach out uh, by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching this video please do like it subscribe it and share to maximum number of people uh, keep supporting thank you